Hi, so here we have an 820-3209 board from a MacBook Air 13 inch 2012 and uh, the issue with uh, this board is that it doesn't turn on and uh, in fact we don't even have a green light on the MagSafe if we plug it in, as you can see, nothing is happening so, in this case, the first thing we are gonna check is the voltage on the PP3 before 2 G3 hot. So if we take a look at the board view, board view is right here, and we are gonna look for PP3 before 2 G3 hot, and we can conveniently measure it right there on this inductor. So we are gonna do that right now. So we have our multimeter in voltage mode. We have uh, one probe on ground and the other probe on PP3 reflector. And as you can see, it is 3.42 volts. So PP3 reflector 2 is the first power rail to come up on MacBook boards. It powers, for example, the SMC. The SMC is what actually turns on the green light and starts the power sequence of the machine. Another very important voltage is PP bus G3 hot. So PP bus G3 hot can be measured over there. For example, on the fuse F7040. So we are going to check the voltage on F7040. And we get 8. 2 volts, which isn't right. In fact, it is supposed to be around 8.4 volts on the, this board. And uh, when PP bus G3 hot is just a bit lower, like 8.2 volts, it means the SMC isn't starting. Because the SMC actually sends some commands to the charger IC, which controls PP bus G3 hot, to tell it to increase the voltage to uh, 8. 4 volts or so on this board. So SMC isn't starting, so it explains the green light being missing and the machine not turning on. So we are gonna try to figure out what, why the SMC isn't starting. We know it's getting its power PP342, but we also have to check if it's getting its reset signal. So reset signal must be high for the SMC to turn on, otherwise it's gonna stay off. So we're gonna check the SMC reset L signal, and we can measure it on the other side of the board, right there, for example. So we're gonna turn on turn over the board and check the voltage on SMC reset L, which is right there. And as you can see, it is 0.6 volts, which isn't right, because it's supposed to be 3.3 volts. So we have to figure out why SMC reset L is missing. First thing to check is, does it have a short to ground? So let's put multimeter in resistance mode and measure the resistance to ground on SMC reset L. And no it doesn't, there is a 60 kilo ohms to ground, so it's perfectly fine. So the next thing we are going to check is where does SMC reset L comes from. So let's switch to the schematic and look for SMC reset L. We have uh, the block diagram, but we are not interested in that right now, since you already know the circuit controlling SMC reset L is right there. So, SMC reset L is the output here. It's pulled up by a resistor, R5000, to PP3-S5 SMC. PP3-S5 SMC is, in fact, the same as P3V42. If we look at 
this voltage on the power power aliases page so it shows up right there pp3 s5 smc and it is equal to pp3 for 2g field so we already know that's present but we are still gonna check on r 5000 the voltage it gets on its pin 1 and the resistance of the resistor itself so let's check uh, that sorry on the board view r5000 is the one we were already measuring at earlier so we know where it is so let's check first the resistance since we are already in resistance mode and the board is unplugged so resistance across the resistor is 100k which is perfectly fine and if we check the voltage on the other side of the resistor right there it's 3.42 volts so it's fine next thing to check is the signals going into the chip itself so the chip controls SMC reset L and will pull it low uh, if SMC T-pad RST L and SMC on off L are low it will trigger the SMC reset with the combination of the keyboard so we're gonna check both these voltages to see what is actually happening over there on the board view it's uh, U5010 right there and we want to check SMC T-pad RST L on pin 6 and SMC on off L on pin 7 so let's check those So we have SMC TIPA RST L on this point, which is 0.6 volts, and we have SMC on off L on the other probe point, which is 0.2 volts. So both of them are wrong. So we definitely have an issue over here. Let's check again resistance to ground. Let's do that here. 500 ohms on SMC on of L isn't right, so there is a problem there. And we have 60 kilo ohms on TIPA RSTL, so that's good. But we have an issue on SMC on of L. It's supposed to be much higher than this. So let's go back to the board view and check what connects to SMC on of L. So we have our chip right there. We have the SMC over there. We have the power on pads that can be the problem right now. We have a capacitor here C5734 which could be the problem. On the other side we have R5070 it can't be the problem what's pulling it to ground because it's not connected to ground and resistors really short we have some other power on pads that can't be the problem because uh, they are not connected to anything and there is a connector and if the connector isn't damaged there is no reason for it to be the problem so for now we have three sub suspects which is this small capacitor over there, the SMC and U5010. So first thing to check is this capacitor. This was already done, so if we take a look under the microscope,
So the capacitor we are interested in is this capacitor and uh, we already shifted it from uh, one pad so that it doesn't make contact anymore on the SMC on of L line. So that's excluded from the equation. So what's left is the SMC and the SMC, the U5010 chip. So our chip is right there and the SMC is right there. The SMC itself has already been replaced previously. So for now, we will say that it's not the problem, but the U5010 chip could be our problem. So we're gonna remove it and see if the resistance on SMC on a fail comes up. So let's remove it. So the chip is off, so let's check our uh, resistance to ground again. So right there. And as you can see, the resistance to ground is now uh, 13 kilo ohms, so it shouldn't be shorted to ground anymore. Of course, we will need to replace the chip but uh, we can still check if uh, SMC on of L is now 3.4 volts like it should be and SMC reset L isn't pulled to run anymore so the board is still burning hot so we are gonna wait a little bit for it to cool down Okay, that should be good. So let's plug in the MagSafe. And measure our voltages. We'll go back into voltage mode. SMC on of L is 3.4 volts, SMC TPA DRSTL is 3.4 volts, and SMC reset L is 3.3 volts. So this was most likely the problem. So we're gonna take a chip from a donor board and replace it on this board. So first let's thin the pads. some flux okay let's get our donor board so on the donor board our chip is right over there so let's desolder it
Let's solder it on the other board. Right over there. We are gonna pick up the excess solder in the soldering iron and make sure we plug the flow to fine. Here we go. Okay. Let's clean up a little bit. Let's make sure we didn't create another shot to ground. We can check the resistance to ground. Seventeen kilo ohms, eighty, two hundred, sixty. Looks fine. And this looks fine as well. Let's not forget about, about the capacitor right there. So we are going to solder that back. Okay, let's just make it a little bit more pretty. Here we go. Okay, that looks fine. Board should be old enough. So let's plug in the MagSafe. We got fan spin. CPU is warming up, so it should be good. So I have just a little bit of bad contact inside the MagSafe, so I'm not sure I'm gonna get green light. But 
I'm gonna try now. And I'm not getting green light. Ah, here we go. Yeah, just a bad contact inside the mask safe. So green to orange, it's fine. We have fan spin. Everything looks good. So we had a bad U5010 IC that controls the SMC Reset L line. So it was pulling down SMC Reset L, but also SMC on off L, SMC T-pad STL. This little chip. So the SMC was not starting, so we didn't have a startup of the power sequence, so no fan spin. We didn't have an uh, orange light or green light on the MagSafe, and we had only 8.2 volts on the on PP bus G3 hot. So just to confirm the voltage on PP bus G3 hot is now 8.4 volts, like it should be on this board. Just to clarify, this is a 2012 board, MacBook Air. On this, PP bus G3 hot is supposed to be 8.4 volts, not 8.56 volts, like you can find on the newer 2013 and uh, 15 boards. So 2012 and earlier MacBook Air boards are 8.4 volts on PP bus G3 hot. So let's get rid of this. Let's bring the MacBook to test our board. And so we already have one board inside, but uh, no big deal. We're gonna do what we should not do, which is This and this and this just so that I sh can show you this board can indeed turn on. Okay, I don't have a sync. Uh, which will be a problem on this board. Let me try to find a heat sink. This should be it. Let's quickly screw. Sorry, I was out of the frame. Well, and since we have a heat sink, we are gonna take the SSD as well. It's gonna be really slow to boot because I won't plug the trackpad right now, but uh, no big deal. Just to make sure we can indeed boot into an OS, and then I'm gonna do it properly, of course. I'm gonna swap the board completely run ASD to make sure everything is fine and of course uh, test the features that ASD cannot test but for now this is gonna do okay. Closing back up on its own. Okay, this should be good. Let's plug in the MagSafe. We have fan spin. And 
and as you can see the screen turns on here we go you can hear the fan spinning fast because we don't have the touchpad plugged in and it's gonna take a while to boot ok so we booted I don't have a keyboard plugged in or anything so I can't uh, log in but it doesn't matter uh, just to show that it seems to be working fine of course uh, let me turn it off first of course as I said um, we have to do some real taste testing on this since there was an issue near the SMC the SMC was uh, originally um, shorted so that's why it was replaced but it wasn't enough to solve the problem since we have uh, the U5010 problem as well so uh, to make sure everything works fine on the SMC we are gonna have to run ASD and test the features we need to test but uh, that's it this one wasn't uh, too bad uh, this one wasn't too difficult to solve uh, we had the SMC replacement done before so that wasn't on the camera but uh, just replacing U5010 was a pretty easy fix 